so it's after hours. Uh, a bunch of y'all have been emailing, asking, uh, you know, I'm interested in becoming a Harley tech. What kind of tools do I need? Um, I want to work on bikes. Uh, what kind of layout do you have? We shut the shop down. Figured I'd uh, burn a few minutes before I head home, walk you through my setup, and you can kind of see what I've got and, and go from there. Um, I've been places and I've seen all these guys with these 144 inch, you know, monster KRLs with seven side lockers and, you know, the tool carts, etc. I'm not knocking that, but in my experience doing this 25 plus years, you're not going to need anything that big. Um, realistically, you're going to be looking at, this is a 68 with a work center and a side locker, uh, Epic 68, and it's got all the room I need. In fact, you'll see as we go through these drawers, I've got some drawers that have empty space in them because I, I just don't have it full. Uh, so if you're looking to start out, don't sell your soul to Snap-on Man. I know Jim's going to kill me for that, my Snap-on guy. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't go nuts on your box. Uh, instead, spend the money on the tools you're going to need to get paid. Uh, box isn't getting you paid, your tools are. So we're going to walk through uh, any of the tools that you see. I'm not going to pull them all out and show them to you. Uh, I'll run a list down at the bottom of the different tool numbers that I have. Any questions you have on the specifics, hit me up, and I'm happy to answer them at the bottom of the video. Uh, you can comment, like, email, whatever, and uh, I'll do my best to get your questions answered. Uh, so again, this is a Epic 68, the side locker and the work center. I figure right now you're probably sitting at home drinking a beer, so cheers. Uh, the Epic doesn't come with a powered drawer. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where the guy modified his box to make this drawer a powered drawer. I'm not cutting up a $20,000 toolbox to make a powered drawer. I just, I wasn't about it. So instead, what I did is I bought a side locker, I bought the snap-on uh, multi-bay charger, and the tool, the uh, power tool hanger, and to me, it, it works just as good. Uh, it was way cheaper, and my box doesn't look like Swiss cheese. Uh, let's see. Top of my box, not a lot of stuff that uh, I use regularly. Um, I've got a lead down tester. Uh, these are actually automotive uh, com uh, cooling system testers. Uh, I've got Snap-on's Easy Out kit. This. No, I'm sorry, this is a stud installer and remover. When you're dealing with exhaust studs, you'll use this a lot. Uh, Snap-on uh, laser uh, thermometer. Uh, let's see, this is one of the easy out kits. It's a good little kit. It's got everything that I've needed so far. Um, it's made by Irwin. It's cheap. Uh, I've already given my Snap-on man a pan of flash and my soul. Uh, so if I can save money on tools, I will. A lot of these tools you're going to see are one of two brands, either Motion Pro or Gems. Gems Tools uh, makes an amazing product. They have an amazing guarantee. Uh, they also come with an amazing price tag. Motion Pro, in a lot of instances, is a good bit cheaper. Um, the quality is pretty good. I it, Normally what I do is if I can buy a Gems Tool for what I need and I'm going to use it a lot, I'll buy the Gems Tool. Uh, the items that Gems doesn't carry or make I'll purchase Motion Pro to fill in the gaps. Uh, case in point, this is a uh, Motion Pro slide hammer for pulling wheel bearings. Uh, just going to go through this. When you have a rusted or seized up wheel bearing, a slide hammer is going to absolutely beat you to death. I've gone home with blisters, cuts, bruises all over my hands from trying to slide hammer a bearing out. For wheels uh, on newer bikes, that are the bearings are fairly decent and in good shape it'll work just fine uh, but I'll show you the other tool I have for the ones that are a little bit more stubborn and uh, it'll save you a lot of time my big thing in this is organization uh, rather than buying a huge box my thing was making sure that I had my box organized in a way that allowed me to quickly find the tool I needed uh, instead of wasting you know if every time you watch your box you're spending five minutes looking for something that's a lot of product productivity that's lost. Uh, whereas if you have things laid out and you know where your tools are, it allows you to, to roll more bikes, flag more hours, make more money. 
Uh, this drawer is stuff that I'm using pretty much at least once or twice a week. Uh, the cam bearing removal tools and installer plates, uh, fork tools, uh, exhaust stud, a room, uh, temp guide for drilling out exhaust studs on that front head. Uh, I don't know if you've had it happen yet, but if you break off that top exhaust stud on uh, the front jug of a Harley, nine times out of 10, if you try to do it freehand, you're gonna be replacing the head. Uh, this little Jim's tool, part number 1705, and I'll list all the part numbers in the description so uh, you can follow up with your guys and see what you can buy. Uh, but this has saved my life and saved me a fortune many, many times. Uh, drive belt, this is for the, the sprocket on a drive belt. I've got seal installers, ring compressors, ignition lock, ignition tool. This little bastard. It's a 90 degree screwdriver. As you turn it, two little gears engage like in a uh, ring and pinion, and it'll turn your Allen head or your Torx bit. It gets you in a lot of places that you can't get a standard size screwdriver. Uh, standard cover tool. Uh, the fueling cam run out, cam plate run out, so you can check your cam run out. Uh, again, the multi charge from Snap On, my printer. I got a Bluetooth printer, that way I don't have to have all the wires running out the back. Uh, this is a, a big twin main shaft bearing race tool. Uh, Jim's master cylinder bleeding kit comes with five or six, I think, caps for the different master cylinders that Harley's used. It allows you to bleed the brake system pretty quickly. Uh, there's another approach to this as well. I have both. I'll show you that later. Um, swing arm bearing installer, inner cam bearings for, remover for a twin cam. Uh, this is a oh Milwaukee eight cam uh, bearing tool. <clears throat> that slide hammer I was showing you on how to pull wheel bearings. All right, this is a different approach. This is a Jim's tool. And when you've got those stubborn, seized up wheel bearings, what this does, zero went out. What this does is instead of using your manual effort to pull the bearing out with a slide hammer, as you tighten <coughs> the tool down with the collet inside the, <coughs> the bearing, this uses uh, a lever. Uh, it, a nut and bolt, the threads on a screw are, are, are a lever. And so every turn of this nut gives you a mechanical advantage to pull in that bearing. It's a lot smoother, a lot slower, uh, and as long as you can keep that wheel from spinning on you, this will get those uh, wheel bearings out that you just absolutely can't pull free. Great kit, it comes with an installer as well. Can't recommend having both on hand enough. Again, cork seal tools. Uh, uh, this is for uh, checking the cam run out on a Milwaukee 8. It's by Fueling. Really like Fueling's gauges and uh, their, uh, their run out tools. This is a uh, another big twin cam bearing installer. Main seal remover installer. This, uh, this is a compression release kit. If you're installing compression releases, and you don't have a jig, you will end up buying a whole lot of replacement parts when you tear them up. Jim's has knocked that out. Gives you uh, the guide to make sure that the compression releases are installed in the right spot and uh, you're not marring up everything trying to drill it. Me and this tool go the rounds. I can never get it back in the box. Uh, now that they've dropped the Milwaukee 8, once again, we're having to buy a bunch more tools. Uh, you know, if I can get away with using one tool to work on big twins and Milwaukee 8s, I will. But there's such a difference in the engine, you're going to end up buying more stuff to work on Milwaukee 8s. Example, it's for the uh, alternator on a big twin. Fork tool, uh, Motion Pro, it's removing the rear axle nuts, 36 millimeter. Great tool by Motion Pro. Again, I'm not knocking the Motion Pro at all. Brake uh, caliper compressor. Uh, yeah. So I use it all the time. Leak finder. 
when you've got a stubborn leak that you can't quite figure out where it's coming from, get yourself a UV light, put that in the oil, it'll help you locate the source of the leak. So as I'm going through these tools, uh, I work on almost entirely Harleys. Uh, so you're going to see almost all of these tools are going to be for working on Harleys. Uh, the other guys do the metric work. I don't have anything against metrics, I just don't fix them. Uh, we move down. I've got uh, uh, the AFI pressure gauge. It allows you to check the fuel pressure. Again, gems. Uh, uh, bouncer shaft installer. Motion Pro. It's a fuel injector cleaner kit. Uh, my fluid meter. Uh, Snap-on. So I've got two different diagnostic tools I use. Uh, the Snap-on is great because it allows me to be very portable. Uh, it doesn't tether me to a computer. Uh, so you'll see me take my Ethos Pro out. Uh, I've got the ridiculously expensive Snap-on Harley adapter. Uh, but this allows me to uh, plug in out in the parking lot, uh, on site, without having to lug my laptop with me. Uh, I really like the Ethos Pro. I've had, I had the old football. Um, I, I like this one a lot better. Uh, a no code jump box, another jump box. Your Motion Pro uh, fuel injector thinner kit. Make sure you get the adapters you need to work with the fuel injectors that you're going to be working with. Uh, power probe. It, use this thing daily. Uh, I do all of my in-house Diag work using uh, Techno Research, their Centurion tool. We use um, their uh, direct link for tuning. Great kit. Um, can't say enough good things about it. Uh, an assortment of Molex connectors. And then stuff that I don't use a whole lot. Uh, except for this. Uh, this short open circuit tracer, uh, again, is by Power Probe. Uh, that's a fantastic tool. It's the PP ECT 3000. Again, I'll put the information down below. But if you're having a really hard time finding an open circuit, this will save your life. It, it's just fantastic. Um, really a good tool. Like I said, I didn't do the power drawer. I got the power bank and the, uh, the impact organizer. Don't need... 15 different impacts. This little 14.4 snap on 3 8 gets used 90% of the time. It does pretty much everything I need it to do. A uh, little bitty screw gun. As you can see by how clean it is, my half inch snap on hardly ever gets used. Uh, 3 8 14.4 that I, uh, I st borrowed or borrow stole from a colleague. He, was, uh, he had a a couple of them. He gave me that one. Uh, I use it a good bit, but not as much as this. It's just so lightweight and so easy to use to manipulate. It's just a good, good tool. So that's the locker. Now on my box, Snap-on, Mac, Mac. Uh, I don't think Mac goes. I got trucks anymore. Uh, Cornwall. They will sell you something to do anything you could possibly want, as long as you're willing to give up your firstborn. They'll take care of you. Uh, case in point, they have the lights that go in your box. When you lift your lid, the light comes on, the angels sing, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I was not dropping 200 plus dollars, almost $300 for a snap-on light kit. Instead, I got a hold of uh, a vendor that sells LED tubes that are length specific. I bought two 48 inch LED strips. I bought a magnetic switch and I made my own that does the exact same thing for less than hundred bucks, way less than hundred bucks. Um, this is something you want, hit me up. I can get you set up, you can put it in your box. Uh, they're cheap, they work great. I've had this running now for years and it hasn't, it hasn't given me a hard time. I have two, one is frosted and one is uh, the clear white. Sometimes the clear white gets a little bit hard on your eyes. So I have both, sometimes I need both lights on if I'm working with something really small, really detailed. Don't judge me on the work center. I actually work. And my toolbox shows it. Uh, 
suggestion. Whenever you buy a Jim's tool, they're going to send you a cute little instruction sheet on how to use the tool. It will get greasy, it will get folded up, it will get lost, it will get torn. Uh, your other mechanic will leave it laying on the lift after he borrows your tool, it will get gas soaked, and then when you go to use it again a year later, because some of these you don't use that often, you won't be able to read it. Uh, the young lady up front is fantastic. She went through, grabbed all of my instruction sheets for all my gems tools, laminated them, hole punched them, put them in order. So now I have a binder for all of my gems tools. And not just them, uh, my ignition tester, there, that instruction book is in there, laminated as well. Um, that's how I keep track of, of my walkthroughs. Again, talking about organization being the key to productivity. Uh, I got tired of constantly looking for stuff. The, the snap-on rails, and I don't mean snap-on, but the click rails that uh, are magnetic or uh, that you just lay in your box. They were sliding around. I, I just got tired of it. So I went ahead and I, I purchased the Mac uh, tool grid. And it has saved me hours already. I'll walk you through the setup. All right, so the Mac uh, tool grid, it comes with socket or, uh, the ratchet organizers, it comes with wrench organizers, socket organizers from half inch, I think they even have uh, three quarter inch all the way down to quarter inch. Uh, they have all kinds of different add-ons or uh, it's a modular system. You can get different pieces to add to the grid to help you organize. This is the way I laid mine out. So your red, I'm going to call them adapters because I don't know what the proper term is, but the red adapters are going to be uh, standard. Your blues are metric. So I've got my half inch standard impacts and then shorts. I've got uh, uh, half inch stubbies, and then my three eighths, the intermediate and shorts, six and 12 points. I've got my swivels half-inch Allens, uh, my, uh, my, my 3-8-inch Allen heads that I use and you'll use all day, every day, uh, stubby, quarter-inch Allens, and the nice thing is the, the Allen set from Snap-on, it goes from a quarter-inch drive up to a 3-8-inch drive in the same set, so this allows you to install or to place your Allens all together and go from the quarter inch drive to the three eighths. Uh, torques, long torques, and then we get into the same thing that's, that's metric. Uh, ratchets, you know, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. I've got, these are the wrenches I use more than anything else. That's why they're up in my top drawer. Uh, these get used a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, ball head, Standard head Allen's uh, extended. My uh, butane snap-on butane soldering iron, torque wrench, etc. I've got the additional torque wrenches. My uh, torque wrenches that measure inch pounds uh, in the back. All right. Uh, screwdrivers, like I said, lots of different adapters. It's all modular. You can lay it out as you want. Screwdrivers. Snap ring pliers, uh, the pliers that I use fairly regularly, crow's feet, O2 wrenches. Um, this little kit, I, I took the top off so it would fit, but basically this is just a very, very small drive uh, kit of Torx and Allens. This gets used a lot. Um, standard, again the red is standard. Standard stubbies, standard line wrenches. Um, I've got some uh, some uh, Mac knuckle savers. Um, just a set of wrenches that I've had for a while. I really like. Uh, then my ratcheting wrenches, standard metric. Um, Gear wrench makes a good ratcheting wrench. I didn't buy the Snap-on standard ratcheting wrenches. Instead, I bought the gear wrench. These are the Snap-on ratcheting metric wrenches, stubbies, set of corn walls. Anybody's got a source to get a uh, 17 millimeter corn wall double flex, 
man, let me know. Uh, somebody walked off with my 17 mil, or I left it in the car, and uh, I need to replace it. So I ended up picking up a blue point off of eBay, uh, but it's not double flex. Uh, I can't. I've gone on their website, and you can't buy them online, and we don't have a point well rep that comes out here. Um, again, some more of my pliers that don't get used quite as much. Uh, screwdrivers, these are more throwaways. Um, if I lose these, I don't get too heartbroken. Um, somebody asked to borrow a screwdriver, that's what they get. Uh, different uh, adjustable wrenches, uh, line pliers, you can see it, vice grips. Uh, again, more line pliers. One of the headaches with uh, the Epic 68 is a lot of these drawers are very shallow. Um, my torque screwdrivers, my torque drivers won't fit in the other drawers, so I've got them back here. Uh, tap and die sets, drills. See it. Now we get to the drawers where I have the stuff that I don't have anywhere else to put. Vacuum pumps. Every time you buy an SNS kit, you get a tube of a uh, assembly loop. I have my own bottle of uh, Permatex Ultra Slick, so I have these coming out of my ears. Uh, ignition mate, if you're doing a lot of electrical and you're having a lot of issues trying to diag, ignition issues. Can't say enough good things about this tool. It's fantastic. Um, again, these are just snap-on line clamps. Uh, my compression gauge set, snap-on compression gauge set. Uh, older stuff that I've had in here. AC Leaf Finder kit because it's Houston and yeah. Um, I mean, you can see some of this stuff doesn't get used a whole lot. Electrical test of tape. Um, It'll help you isolate vibrations. You've got wiring harnesses that are rattling against plastic. That's the tape will silence those. Um, I use this a lot. Uh, I actually learned about this doing audio installs, and I've used it ever since. Um, strippers, crimpers, cutters. Uh, you will get an infinitely sick of this little bastard right here. This is a Molex pin tool. I hate this thing, but I use it all the time. More specialty wrenches. Um, Lang makes some pretty cool tools for uh, intake manifolds, um, uh, axle wrenches, uh, Torx, Allens. Everybody has, if you work on Harleys long enough, you'll have your cut down quarter wrench and your cut down uh, 3 16 Extensions, breaker bars. This is a pretty cool gizmo too. It allows you to uh, use a end wrench as a breaker bar. Uh, max leverage is who makes it. Um, really recommend it. I've been real impressed. It'll, it's allowed me to get a hold of things that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Um, long and short ratchets, drills, cut off wheels. Besides the ratchets, I can refer to this as my old shit box. This is the infamous, wherever it doesn't fit, it goes here. When you buy the, the uh, tool grid, this is what the ex adapters that you buy, this is how they come in these little bags. Two more tap and die sets. Actually, three more tap and die sets. Hopefully that gives you guys an idea of at least some starting essentials that you're going to need to be able to work on Harley Davidson's. Um, the tools that I keep on hand pretty much allow me to work on everything from Evos all the way up uh, to Milwaukee 8s. 
again, I'm going to try to put together a list of uh, the part numbers or product numbers in the description below, so you can uh, you can follow up and, and start putting your your toolbox together. We appreciate you uh, checking us out. If you'll do us a favor, please click the link and subscribe button below. We sure do appreciate it. And don't hesitate to uh, hit us up with any questions you have. More than happy to talk to all you guys and answer any questions that I can. Hopefully you all have a good one, and I'll see you down the road.